Hi everybody, this is Flash001 USA here, and this is a wood gasification project that I've been working on. I'm going to give you a basic description of what you're looking at, so sit back and enjoy the video. On the bottom of the unit, there's two steel plates. You have a larger one, then you have a smaller one in the center. This is where you remove the biochar or the ashes after you've been running the unit. It almost looks like an old boiler that you would see on a train with the rivets all the way around it. But um, the largest plate was just to give it more tensile strength and also to make the door smaller so it'd be easier to seal the unit. I had to have a larger hole on the barrel so I could get inside of it and put all the parts on the inside of it. I used that outer piece of steel on it to shrink the door, to shrink the hole on it, with the smaller center piece being the ash removal plate. Moving on forward, we got the grate shaker here. It goes back and forth, or you can spin it either way. Works pretty good. I'll demonstrate all this. This is the ignition port right here. It's made to come off. Let's put the fire into it right there. Once it's lit, put it back together. Let's look at the top of this thing now. All I got here is a quarter inch steel plate. Had um, 16 hole drilled into it. It's got three eighths inch uh, nuts and bolts on it. This thing is mounted to the top of this thing with RTV cement as a sealant. Um, it's pretty much airtight. This is the burn tube, the actual burn tube. And I don't know if you'll be able to see inside of it, but I'm going to put the camera up here and see if you can see the grate going back and forth. Moving on around. This is the side view of it. Looking right here. This is the output gas that comes into here goes into the vortex. The vortex I made with two cans. One is a gallon paint can and then at the bottom of it I got a quart paint can. Basically the gas will come in here, goes down to the bottom, comes back up to go back up the tube. There's my first capture for capturing tars and drips. I've actually got two on here. I've got one here and I've got a second one down here. But let's take a look at this thing now. Also, I want to note something here. The way I cut this hole in here, I was able to screw this piece in here. So I didn't have to weld it or I didn't even have to use anything but RTV cement. I chose instead to use high temperature solder. It's rated at 450 degrees. The hottest that I could get this thing was up to about 330 degrees. Um, the solder never even got soft so they actually turned out to be a damn good seal and it's got some good tensile strength behind it now let's take a look here the gas comes up through here then I got it splitting off into two pipes I did this to cut the velocity in half to allow the gas more cooling time okay so the gas now goes down to the two tubes it goes back down to the bottom here any drip and runoff goes down here. The gas now comes out in here, goes into here. That's my filter. And um, in my filter, I'm using about two thirds way full of crumpled newspaper. And I got a screen on top of that. And I've got wood chips stacked on top of that. Then I use the fan blower here to bring up the gas so I can get a vacuum on it to get it lit. This is one of those units that you use in a boat when I guess when you're. Um, want to make sure you don't have gas fumes where the engine is so that you don't have any explosions or I think somebody told me they even use these things in NASCAR I don't know but it's a 12 volt unit and um, it does work but I don't recommend using these I want to come back over here let you get another look at it from a different angle Now, I'm starting it up with wood pellets, but I'm using wood chips that's broken from the yard right here.
having wood and finding wood is no problem because all of my property is nothing but woods. I'm surrounded with woods here, so I'm good to go there. Once again, this is the wood gasification unit. When the sun goes down, I'm gonna fire it up and actually let you see the thing in action. All right, been running this thing for about four or five hours now. I started it up using um, wood pellets that came from Tractor Supply, about a 40 pound bag for about five bucks. But I've been running it since then off of twigs and stuff that I've got in the yard here. I got a dead branch that fell off a tree this summer. Couldn't dry it out. I've been just smashing it up into sticks right there. And um, let me show you. I got a flashlight so I can shine it down in here. That's it. Sticks. And you see the flame off of it. It doesn't get any bluer than that. I'm extremely happy with this. Now, something that I learned running this thing. If you burn too much fuel in it at one time, if you're drawing too much on it, your fans run too fast, what you wind up with is you get a bunch of red hot coals that build up fast inside this unit, so it's a balancing act. You want to set this thing up so that you're not drawing too much off of it, so that your coals and ashes have a tendency not to overbuild into it. What you want to have happen is you want this thing to be able to burn, the ashes to drop, so that you can put more fuel into it. That's why I guess they specify different size tubes for different sizes motors. For what I'm running here now, I've got a 4 inch tube. They're saying it's good to 15 horsepower, so I'm going to be running a 5 horsepower generator off this thing. That should be more than enough, but I'm extremely happy with this. And um, there it is. I'm going to show you a couple things here too. This thing is running extremely, extremely cool. This is the Vortex filter. I'm going to reach over and I'm going to grab a hold of the can, grab a hold of the pipe right here. I've got it. You see my hand on it. Man, I felt bath water hotter than that. Go to the top of it. Extremely cool. It's even cooler at the top of it. Coming out, I'm coming out of here to the next pipe, grabbing it. Cool. Going all the way down sliding down to the bottom of it and it's almost cold I'm actually using PVC pipe at the very top of this thing here that was one of my concerns that it was going to get too hot with the gases coming out of the unit and if you're drawing massive gas and running the fan yeah it, it probably exceeds the temperature rating for the PVC pipe but running this thing has been a learning experience I'm gonna make some changes on it and what I've got right now I've got a single pipe coming out of the vortex and it splits off into dual pipes. Two pipes, I'm gonna get around where the light will show it up better. You see right there, the reason I did that, I wanted to cut the velocity in half, which would allow the gas to cool down yet even more. This is nothing but one and a quarter inch fence post. The haul of stuff you can go get to put up fence with. Much cheaper than going and buying an exhaust line that you get for a car, so there you go. But anyhow, I've got three foot sections on each side. I'm going to change that to either five or six foot sections. And um, I'm going to do that because I feel that it will allow the gas to cool even more. And the more you cool this gas down, the better it's going, the unit's going to work. I've been sitting here jibber jabbering on the camera here. And um, since I've been doing that, you can see this flame. It's still burning a nice clean blue. I'm going to zoom in on it. There is nothing in the world wrong with that fuel right there. That'll run a generator, no doubt about it. All right, I'm going to back back off. I'm going to show you the top of this unit here. This is the stick I've been poking stuff with. But I've got a skill saw blade up here. And it's got the small hole in the center of it. I found out that actually helps regulate this thing too. So it actually makes it burn a little bit smoother because I guess it's restricting air going into it. I'm going to make me a safety top for this thing and basically what it's going to be is going to be something maybe even use a blade it'll be on hinges where i can flip it down and he actually close it so that it stays closed with the latch so if there is a foop factor on it that there's no danger with it um, i'm also going to make me another piece of metal that slides over the top where i can suffocate it out if i need to 
that's just going to be a safety factor. On the top of this unit, I've got a quarter inch thick steel plate that my fire tube is welded to. Everything is bolted down and everything has high temperature um, cement on it, RTV cement on it. Everything does. That's one thing you've got to be extremely careful with. As long as you keep any oxygen that's not supposed to be getting in this where it shouldn't be, you'll be safe. If um, you have any leakage on it, you have a chance of a flashback or a small explosion. It's not going to blow up like a bomb, but you wouldn't want to be over it and have the coals blow up in your face. There's my ignition port. I didn't even weld it in. What I did was I cut the hole. I made me a steel donut for it. And I made me a compression ring out of aluminum foil. And of course I used RTV cement in combination with it. So when I tightened that down, that it made an absolute seal on it. The same thing with my handle here. Um, I actually used 450 degrees solder on that, plumber solder, and no issues whatsoever. I've tried to take a nail and see if it's softening it up. It's not. The ash port on this thing is basically where I cut the hole in the barrel. I used two pieces of steel. This outer piece here that looks like a, a boiler on an old engineer on an old train or something. That came off of an old computer. It's a thick piece of steel. I cut it. I made it concave, shaped it around. I gave this uh, barrel tensile strength. And then I cut a smaller hole for my port to clean ashes out of. I used nuts and bolts. The bolts are welded on the back. So the nuts are welded on the back so the bolts can hold everything in. Absolutely sealed. Now, going back around this thing here. Um, shine a flashlight on it. Right there is high temperature solder and I've ran this thing as hot as I could run it that solder is rated at 450 degrees before it melts it's not even getting nowhere near close to that I'm gonna put this on it's 198 degrees I think the hottest I got it was 300 degrees so it was 150 degrees in the safe from being to the liquefaction point before it actually ran um, I drilled this hole so clean that when I was able to screw this fitting in it actually locked in nice and tight, so I just about didn't need solder. I probably could have used RTV cement, but I didn't. I went ahead and soldered it in. Now, as far as the burn, as far as the burn tube goes, no, I used a welder on that and actually welded the pipe to that. You have to because the temperatures are just too damn hot. Doesn't get any bluer than that. Just want to show everybody the wood gas and fire. Got it up and run. This is a project that I built in my backyard out of junk. Basically, an old discarded barrel, some fence poles, PVC pipe, nuts and bolts, a little bit of steel, and some elbow grease. People should be asking a serious question. Why we pay so much for fuel? and why at times we go through fuel crisis. Here I am, I made this out of nothing, and I'm producing viable fuel. This technology has been around for a long, long time. During World War II, when Germany ran out of gas, the German people had to have a way to farm their lands, and they also had to have a way to get around. A lot of the vehicles were converted to run on this type of fuel. But here's the kicker. It even goes back further than World War II. Back in the days of Jack the Ripper in London, England, this is the same fuel that was manufactured to run their street lamps with. In other words, this is a very old technology. And unlike fossil fuels, it does not add to the carbon footprint that we have now. It doesn't matter that you use this as a fuel because it's going to release the same gases and the same byproducts back into the earth as if it were laying on the ground and decaying all by itself naturally. We could put this country back to work with just this technology alone. In this country, we have hundreds and thousands of acres slammed full of overgrowth. Every year, we see fires that's ignited from this with just a single bolt of lightning. Tens and thousands of acres go up in smoke. Imagine this. This is the pluses we would have if we harvested this stuff. First of all, we'd be cleaning up our land. Plus, it's also a renewable fuel that's going to grow back year after year. The second thing is, we're not going to be adding anything to the carbon footprint because that's just the way this stuff works. The third thing is, we could be winging ourselves away from foreign oil. 
I'm going to end this video out with the following statement. I built this unit in my backyard out of junk and it makes viable fuel. If I'm aware that this can be done, I know for a fact there's people in my government that are aware that this technology exists. Why haven't we been using this technology?